Let's pray. God, we are so thankful to be gathered together as one group uh, in this house of worship this morning to be able to fellowship and come in and get some food and coffee and stand around and ask how's your week going and to be gathered together after, I don't know, however many years of, of attending two different services to be in this same place. It's just, it feels good. And so I thank you for this today. I thank you for the risen Christ that uh, even though Easter was last weekend, we continue to celebrate that empty tomb and we will do so for the next several weeks because that, the empty tomb really is what uh, makes it possible for us to be here today. We, we wouldn't be here if he had not risen from the dead. And so we are so thankful and grateful that that over 2,000 years later, we are still gathering in the name of Jesus and worshiping and looking for that day in which he returns, just trying to carry on the mission that Jesus gave us. Lord, we uh, want to just pause for a moment and just confess to you that uh, there are some ways that we have let you down this week. Uh, there are things that we have done, there are things we have left undone, ways in which we have harmed ourselves and others, and we just want to confess this to you. We know it does not please you, but not in a, in a way that um, makes you angry at us, just sorry for us, because we're not living into the life that Jesus wants for us when we do these things and you want to discipline us as as children whom you love and so you want to correct us and get us back on the right path and we want that too we thank you for your grace and love and forgiveness and and we just pray that you would remove anything that would hinder us from seeing you today we also want to lift up to you uh, concerns that we have people that we are worried about situations mm -hmm. We want to call them out to you right now, and as we do this out loud, we pray that you would hear our prayer. Aline Wise. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Lynn Gibson. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Daniel Rooks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Sides family. Lord, Lord, in your, in your mercy, mercy, hear our prayers. Alexis and Jessica. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Chris and I. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amanda McCormick. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Caitlin Lothra Lath in Alabama. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Our new service arrangement. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we give you these and any unspoken requests. Take these, remove the burden from us. We, we ask for the yoke of Jesus. And we ask you to take that heavy stuff. And we thank you for that gift. We worship you with open hearts and open minds this morning, expecting to see you, expecting to hear from you, expecting to leave this place a changed people. And we pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, we are finishing up the Gospel of Matthew today. Our reading comes from... The final chapter, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Listen now for a word from the Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. A word from God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So we are ending our time in the Gospel of Matthew. Have you enjoyed Matthew? It's been good, right? Uh, But we are going to move into Acts and see how the disciples uh, functioned after Jesus ascended into heaven. You know, the Gospel of Matthew is uh, quite abrupt. The ending of it is quite abrupt as compared to, say, Luke or uh, the Gospel of John, in which Jesus uh, hangs out for a long time, and we see several appearances and him interacting with the disciples before he ascended. But in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, it's this abrupt ending. And, And we talked on Thursday about how we saw a series of verbs in here that Jesus gives Uh, action words to the disciples. He says, go, that's that's one verb there, go, make disciples of all nations, baptize them, and teach them all I have commanded. And then, of course, we we talked about the word in there, remember, in some translations might have been another action verb, remember that I'm with you. This is called, as Chuck said, the great commission. Now, if you think about that word commission, you can break that down into co, which means alongside or with, and then mission, which you can think of as uh, marching orders. Jesus is giving them their marching orders to continue doing the work of Jesus with each other. Uh, He's giving this to the 11, so they're to do this work together, and with Jesus, because Jesus says, I will be with you always, even until the end of the age. And until... They and we, as we continue on this tradition, get further instructions. This then is the task that has been handed over to us. I've been thinking a lot about this commissioning, mission of the church. I don't know if you have uh, thought about it, but uh, I'm coming up on my one-year anniversary here at Grace. It's gone by very fast. Isn't that crazy? Coming up on on one year. Well, thank you. You guys have made it a a pleasure and a joy. But in light of that, um, you know, I've just kind of been thinking about the mission of the church and the mission of Grace Church. I have spent the year observing and participating in our various events throughout the year, just kind of taking note of what what has Grace always done? What, What do you normally do? What's new for you? And I'm asking the question now, as I come up on this one-year anniversary, are we carrying out the mission of Jesus here at Grace? Do we need to change some things as we move forward? Are there some things that we need to tweak, maybe? Uh, Maybe some new things that we need to bring in, some things that we need to cut out. As as you can see today, this kind of one-service gathering is one of these things that I felt like maybe might benefit us as a church. I'm thankful that as a, a United Methodist, you know, Chuck said the, the, the mission of the United Methodist Church falls right in line, I think, with the Great Commission. Make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And so I've been thinking, is the UMC carrying out that mission? Is there any church or any denomination anywhere that is carrying out the mission I came across one commentary. It was kind of a snarky comment. The the commentators, it was two of them, they said, you know, Jesus told us to go out and to save the world, and somehow the church, all of us, have gotten that flipped around, and we're asking people to come in to save us, right? We've got light bills we need to pay. Please come join us and tithe and contribute so we can pay the light and the AC bill. We've got buildings and grounds that we need to maintain and pay off. Please, please come to our church. We've got salaries for clergy and staff members. We've got to make sure that we keep these up. Just ask Joanne. We, we need help, right? And so what we do, what I see churches do, 
and us included, is that we, we try new ideas to entice people to come to our church. And I say this even as I have brought in kolaches and donuts to try to entice people to come to church. And so I've just let the weight of the Great Commission sit with me a little bit this week. Because I'm wondering, what would it look like if, not just us, but the church in general, if the church Catholic were to get back to this basic four-verb mission that Jesus gave us, to go out rather than trying to get people to come in to keep the institution alive and then Roy brought up something really good on Thursday. He said, now, did Jesus actually go tell us to go out and save the world? Is that really what he said? No. What Jesus said is make disciples. You know what that word means in Greek, disciple? It is a pupil or a follower or a student. It is one who learns from another. This is very, very different from making converts or securing a lifelong commitment to Christ. A lot of, a lot of uh, emphasis has been placed, at least as a kid growing up, a lot of emphasis placed on make sure you get them to pray the sinner's prayer. This is our job as, as followers of Jesus, to get them to make a commitment to Christ. But that's not what Jesus asked for. He didn't ask us to be salesmen, to get them to sign some kind of a contract but to simply offer an invitation to learn from Jesus. I've been thinking about the Gospel of Matthew. We've made this beautiful trip through Matthew, and I was thinking about from the beginning to the end, the stages that we encounter with Jesus. Do you remember when He first invited the twelve to discipleship in Matthew 4? As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and, his, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And he went from there, and he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, and mending their nets. And he called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus doesn't make any claims about himself in this scene. He doesn't demand that they confess him as Messiah or as Lord or as Emmanuel, God with us. He simply says, follow me. Come follow me. Come hang out with me for a little bit. This is the basic definition of a disciple. And then I remembered in Matthew 16, you know, the the disciples have been following Jesus for a little bit. They're compelled by this man who is strange and wonderful and says some wonderful things, but some strange things too. And Jesus begins to press their understanding of him. And he says, now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, well, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Do You see, disciples, students, followers, were slowly moving from following to believing. But this was a process that was unfolding because Jesus first invited them. He didn't demand anything up front. Just come follow me and perhaps your understanding of who I am will begin to change and grow. And then finally here we have in Matthew 28, Jesus meets them on the mountain and the risen Christ, they bow down and worship him. But it says, but some doubted, even in this moment. Even as they recognize Jesus for more than just Messiah, because Scripture never tells us that Messiah is to be worshipped. He's just God's anointed one that comes to save the people. They recognize Him as more than Messiah here. He is divine. He is worthy of our worship. And they bow down to worship 
And yet even then, some of them are doubting. They second-guess their feelings toward him. Is this appropriate? Even now as I bow down, is this okay? They second-guess their ability to carry out this mission that Jesus is so abruptly handing over to them. It's time, folks. It's time. I want you to go out and make disciples. And yet their doubt did not disqualify them for service. Just as no doubt, we have doubts in this room, right? It does not disqualify us or get us out of obeying the Great Commission. Some of them doubt and Jesus just kind of brushes that aside and presses on with His orders and says, Remember, I am with you always. I am the one with all authority on heaven and earth. I am the one who will guide you and confirm your faith in your heart. I am the one who reveal my true self to the disciples that you will make just as I did for you. Go out and make disciples. I will do the rest. Is what Jesus says. Go, invite them, baptize them, Teach them and remember that I am with you always. Gosh, what if we focused all of our attention on these four verbs? What if we just like like cut everything else out and just focused on these four verbs to go, to invite, make, baptize, teach what if we stopped worrying about making converts what if we stopped worrying about bringing folks into this place to help pay the light bill folks that will attend regularly and help sign up for the volunteer positions that we need right we need we need all hands on deck we need more people what if we just cut that out and just focused on inviting and baptizing and teaching and left their journey, their faith journey with Jesus up to Him. Of course, it would take some pressure off of us. I, I, I felt a lot, of, a lot of pressure as a kid. You know, they would tell us, now, if you don't get them to confess Jesus and they go to hell, that's your fault, right? Man, I felt a lot of pressure as a kid. I got I to gotta secure that sinner's prayer. So it takes some pressure off, like if that's not part of the Great Commission. But it also requires great faith for us in trusting their soul to Jesus and in trusting the life of our church, the future of our church, to Jesus. So maybe we're swapping one pressure for another. I don't know. Matthew doesn't tell us this bit, but there is this beautiful scene in the Gospel of John in which Jesus is gathering the twelve, just as we read in Matthew, but, but John gives us a little bit more information. It says, Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, Come and see. Right? This is the snapshot of what Jesus was telling them to do in Matthew 28. This is it right here. Come and see if anything good can come from a man from Nazareth. That's all I'm asking you to do. Come and see for yourself. That's the Great Commission right there. That's it. Come and see Jesus. Learn from Him. Hear what He has to say. See the things he wants to do and can do. I'm simply inviting you. Folks, part of what I want to do in this new year is to really contemplate this. Not that we have to get rid of the fun stuff. I'm going to keep bringing kolaches and donuts. Because I like them. But I really do want to ask this deep question. How can we get back to the mission? How can we stop doubting ourselves or the effectiveness of Jesus' methods? You know, 
oh, that would never work in today's... I, I, I doubt that would work, Jesus. That just, you know... What if we stopped doubting that? What if we stopped attaching extra things to the Great Commission because we're so focused on trying to preserve the institution? What would that look like? I don't know. I've been in the business of preserving the institution for a long time. But I wonder, what would it look like if we left that up to Jesus? What if we took seriously the last thing that he said in the Gospel of Matthew? Remember, I am with you always, even into the end of the age. Let's pray. Jesus, help us to take this seriously. You wouldn't have asked us to do it if we were not ready. You would not ask us to do it if, if it wasn't going to work. And yet somehow, uh, as the years have gone on, we have twisted this thing and we've gotten it a little bit backwards, I think. And so forgive us for that. Help us to lean into the great commission, the commission, the commands that you gave us on this day. And to trust that you will do what needs to happen. That you will build your church. It's not our responsibility to build your church. Just to simply say, come and see. Meet this wonderful man that I've come to know. We thank you that you are still alive and well. That you are still moving and acting in and through your church. Through us. Through Grace Church. We give you all glory. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Y'all grab the hand of the person next to you. Let's make a big chain around this place. And please receive this blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. May you know that you are perfectly loved. You're completely forgiven and you're uniquely empowered. Now you're called to go out and make disciples for Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. As you go, guess what? You're going to make some mistakes this week, folks. You're going to miss some opportunities. You're going to have other things on your mind. Know this. God's love for you is not based on your performance. Your doubts do not disqualify you for service. Just get back up. Get back out there. And know that when God looks at us by His amazing grace, He says, y'all are nothing but the best of the best of the best. And if you can believe that, it has the power to change everything. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go from this place in peace. I love you all. Amen.